There was a straightaway right before you get uh, to Salem, or get out of Salem, and there was a turn. And uh, I guess I, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know if I hit gravel, because I don't remember anything, and uh, I end up hitting a guardrail. I was in North Carolina visiting my grandma. I was with my mom and my dad and my sisters, and I got the call. I think I got a call about 5 o'clock, and my friend Tara called me because it was her boyfriend's bike that Chad was on. And he, she called me and told me that Chad's been in an accident. She doesn't know how bad it is, but that's all that she could tell me. We didn't know if he was even going to make it through the night. He had our highest level of activation, which meant that we were very concerned about his injuries and his overall condition. Our neurosurgery team had to address a skull fracture that he had, um, which was associated with a laceration and some bleeding around his brain. Uh, the orthopedic surgeons had to stabilize the broken bones in his foot. Uh, the trauma team had to place a tube into his chest to treat his collapsed lung. And then we got our vascular surgeons also to evaluate him because he had an injury to the main blood vessel that goes down his arm that comes off of the blood vessels in your chest. And that was blocked off and he needed a stent to be placed into that artery in order to restore blood flow to his arm. They let us back there and you know he was on hooked up to all types of machines and the first thing they gave me was his wedding band. So that was pretty rough. They weren't telling me that he was definitely gonna survive, but they told me that he was breathing and his heart was working and that he was stable. So I was just I was just thankful for that at that point and just praying that he was gonna get better and that we were gonna wake up tomorrow and he was still gonna be here because you know those first 48 hours are so crucial. And it became apparent that the muscles of his foot were not very healthy and there was concern that he would have infection that could set in. So the decision was made to amputate his leg. I went in there and they, they had just taken the breathing tube out. And I was like, Chad? And he was like, yeah. And he said, he said, I'm all right. First thing I remember is when um, we had a, my birthday party. And I had all my friends and family there. Al Shope with the Antero with my company um, had a prayer that he, he wrote um, and he gathered all of us around in a circle and uh, we all held hands and made a prayer for me. But Chad's a fighter. I mean, he is he's young and he's motivated and he was not going to let any kind of challenge keep him down in any way. The fact that he's in this condition and he has to tell me to be happy and tell me to smile is is just amazing. I love how we have so much fun together. Embrace everything um, because life is it's, it's too short. There's there's something that God wants me to do, and uh, that's I think that's why I'm still here. I want to be able to spend time and just you know for us to go out on a date. It's us too. <laughs> you know, just kind of bring those those moments back. Thank you for saving my life. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me be able to take another breath and being with my family and friends. Thank you to the doctors for saving his life because I could not live without him. So thank you. But we're still gonna we're gonna get back on our feet and or I'm gonna get back on my foot. You know? <laughs>